blast off for another exciting adventure in outer space with Scott McCloud, Space Angel, in the story of The Light Barrier. 25 years ago, a formation of Earth ships, much like this one, plied this same route in space on the first leg of an historic mission, the testing of revolutionary ion power. For causes unknown, the mission ended in failure, resulting in the loss of one of Earth's all-time great astronauts, Major Eddie Colfax. Now, a quarter of a century later, a new mission aims for the old objective, the testing of ion power, a crack at the light barrier, and fate, which handed the reins of the mission to an eager young scientist in the long ago, now picks the same man for the same task, Professor William Mace. Penny for your thoughts, Father. What? Oh, was I that obvious, honey? Mm-hmm. I guess I was just staring at Scott's back sitting there. I was thinking how much he looked like Eddie Colfax. Twenty-five years ago. Oh, it's a crazy feeling as if it were happening all over again. Just as before. Oh, why do you torture yourself with the memory? Well, that memory has served to remind me of my half of the bargain with Eddie. He died keeping his end of the deal. And if I have to work another 25 years to make that blooming ion engine work, I'll do it. You won't have to, Father. It'll work. I know it will. Right as rain, Professor. You'll break the light barrier with it. It'll revolutionize space travel. You'll be famous. Why, you... Shaw. Sure. Do you think I give a hang for any of that? All I want is for the darn thing to work. Then maybe I'll know there's a reason for Eddie's going. Skipper, atmosphere coming up fast. Right, Taurus. Strap in, gang. Starduster to Jupiter Control. Coming in with three chicks on Earth Jupiter space lane. Please advise landing procedure. Roger, Starduster. Activate automatic landing code 57 in 10 space units. Jupiter out. We'll call Jupiter. Hello, chicks. This is Mother Hen. Ready switch over to landing code 57. Jupiter orbital approach guidance control. Ready switch over. Three. be long now, Professor. Then your work really begins. Convincing the Space Council your engine is ready for test. You believe it's ready, don't you, lad? And if you're up to the test, that's what matters most. We're up to it, Professor. We sure are. We've learned a lot since Eddie Colfax made his test. We're with you, Father. All the way. Stand by to rotate. Five years ago, the testing of scientific devices was carried on by planets individually. But certain devices were utilized by some for purposes of war and destruction. And so the major planets of the solar system formed a body called the Universal Space Council, which now controls all scientific devices of a potentially destructive nature. I like this traveling sidewalk. Guess they know spacemen don't like walking. Walking's not so easy on Jupiter. It has a heavy gravity. You worried, Father? Yes, I am. The Space Council may not approve these tests. We'll soon know. The Council meets in half an hour. Universal Space Council headquarters are located on Jupiter. Here, the Council meets in never-ending session. And here it is that Professor Mace must appeal for permission to test his ion engine. It is with great pleasure that the Chair now recognizes the distinguished scientist and delegate from Earth, Professor William Mace. The Saturn delegation is obviously opposed to Professor Mace's test. Scott, what's wrong? Brace yourself, Chris. For hours, Professor Mace lectures the Council on the merit of his revolutionary ion engine. Each molecule of propellant is electrically charged, ionized. This is done by passing the propellant over heated metal grids. 
Then it's possible to accelerate the charged ions to extremely high velocities through these nozzles by means of the electric field. The performance curves in all ranges of harness tests indicates values of specific impulse exceeding 30,000 seconds. Mr. Chairman. The chair recognizes the delegate from Saturn. Mr. Chairman, I move that the council reject Professor Mace's request for permission to conduct ion propulsion tests. For reason that the projected tests lack certain safety precautions and if successful, could result in a potentially destructive device. I second the motion. Scott, this will kill father. It isn't fair. The motion has been made and seconded. Mr. Chairman, I am Professor Mace's daughter, sir. On Earth, we have a game called baseball. That ball in the hands of a bad pitcher is also a potentially destructive device. My father worked hard on his engine for 25 years. And I hate like the Dickens to think it wasn't safe because I'm one of the test crew. She was never going on the test. She is now. Well, Chris, I think you turned the trick. That should be father now. How'd we do, sir? We did it. Here's our authorization to proceed with Project Ion Engine. Oh, wonderful. Great. What did they do? Supreme Council said okay to the whole shooting match. Okay, the test plan, the crew, even agreed to pick up the tab when Earth gets around to making him a bill. Then we're ready to roll. Only one condition. Council wants us to use complex score for a launching station. That's way out in Pluto's orbit. Guess they don't want us near any of the inhabited planets. Just in case anything goes wrong. I'm so happy for you, Father. We've got our chance and we must not fail. Don't worry, Father. This time it will work. It has to, Chris. It has to. Prepare our ships for blast-off. Clear the area for blast-off. Ready, one and two. Nobody knows yet. Eddie Colfax never came back. Taurus, do you have a visual on the complex yet? Aye, Skipper. She's coming up fast. Range is 1,200 Astro Leagues, Scott. Switch on the forward view scope. Starduster to complex score. We're approaching on Jupiter space lane. Roger, Starduster. Been expecting you. Switch to automatic landing control. Channel 23. Roger, control. You get that, chicks? Roger, Starduster. Switching to remote control channel 2-3. There she is. It won't be long now, Father. There's a lot of work to do yet, honey. Stand by for tube landing. Correct angle of approach up two degrees. Very good, Starduster. On target. landed your freighters in tubes three, four, and five. Tube one is set up for assembly. It's an honor to be of service to you, sir. My crew, as well as myself, is at your disposal. Thank you, Commander. 
The more help we can get, the sooner we can prove the capability of the ion rocket. As I understand it, Professor, your ion engine will actually produce its own fuel. Aye, and it's capable of exceeding the speed of light. That we are not going to attempt. At least not on this trip. Well, gang, let's get to work. And so the work begins. The component parts that were brought in the freighters start coming together in the assembly tube, and the great ship begins to take shape. Professor Mace and Scott check each step of assembly. Every part, every circuit has gone over again and again. Knowing the importance of this test, the highly skilled technicians work tirelessly, relentlessly performing the jobs in which they have been trained and rehearsed for so many months. Hour after hour, Scott, Torres, and Crystal study the control systems and procedures. Environment systems are checked and rechecked. Finally, the great ion engine is installed, and the ship is complete, ready for its journey into unknown outer space at speeds never before attained by men or machines. I've said it a thousand times, Scott, but I'll say it once more. Do not exceed the speed of light. We're not ready yet. We don't know what will happen beyond. We'll remember, Professor. Funny. I remember telling that to Eddie Colfax 25 years ago. Don't worry, sir. We'll follow your instructions to the letter. Yes, Father. And this test will be successful. I just know it will. Aye, and we all want to be here for the celebration. Chris, honey, bless you. Father. All aboard, crew. Clear the tube for blast off. All set here. Reactors go. Umbilical go. Cabin pressure, go. Tube doors open. Ready and counting. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Trajectory angle, go. Five, four, three. from the ion shielding. A perfect launch. Good luck, kids. Heaven bless you. Extending ion engine. Engine temperature and speed rating. Speed, point three and rising. Engine temperature, 2700 and rising. More power, Taurus. Speed, point five and rising. What do you read, Taurus? Ion generator is operative. You have power. Acceleration is steady. Okay. Cutting in ion power. Hang on. So far, so good. Speed point four. Scott, that's 81,000 miles per second. Let's try a little more. Watch the road ahead, Taurus. Speed point five. Five and rising fast. Scott, what happens if we have to turn? At this speed, we can't turn. Meteorite collision course. What the? What happened? We hit it. I swear we hit it. We didn't just hit it. We vaporized it. Check instruments for any sign of damage. I'll go here. Same here, no damage to the outer hull. It didn't touch us. Our leading force wave powdered it. Just the same, I wish you'd watch where you're going. If it had been much bigger, it would have powdered us. I saw it coming about 20,000 miles off. That would give you about a half a second to get out of the way. You're just getting slow. Advancing to three-quarter power. Speed point eight and increasing. They're fading out. They're traveling almost as fast as our radar signal. They're approaching the speed of light. Back off, Scott. Back off! Point nine and rising. Scott, back off. 
We're reaching the speed of light. Roger. Power off. Our momentum is carrying us. Hold on. No telling. Everything's fuzzy. What's happening to us? Retro rockets. experience. We actually reached the speed of light. That's what I'd call a successful test. Professor Mace will be mighty proud. I can't wait to see Dad's face. We'll slow to 10,000 MPS before turning. Scott, hold your course. I've got a fix on something. I think it's a spacecraft. I'll retract the crab net. Reverse your G-seats. We'll be breaking fast. In. Okay, firing braking rockets. Scott, it is another ship. There's never been a ship out this far before from our galaxy. Except one. Eddie Colfax made the first test run in this area. Firing retro rockets. of that other craft now. About 5,000 Astra League, Skipper, on a parallel course. Its speed is about 10,000 MPS, Scott. We'll set the guidance control to match his speed. Easy does it. Coming up fast on port side. The design looks familiar, Skipper. You're right, Taurus. But it's an old timer. I'd better go check it out. There's no design allowance for propellant. Only ion rockets don't need propellant. And ours is the first. A except for... Just stand by. This shouldn't take long. If you run into any trouble, Skipper, let us know. No worry, Taurus. I'll keep in touch. I don't know, lass, but we'll soon find out. Oh, no, it can't be. The pilot is seated at the controls. There's no pressure inside, but he's wearing a space helmet. Is he alive? I'm going in and see. Oh, this is awful. He must have been out there a long time. Emergency door open. I'm going in now. Is he? He's alive. I'm bringing him out. the oxygen. He's in a coma. Eddie Colfax? It just isn't possible. Possible or not, here he is, alive, and the same age as when he launched 25 years ago. He and Dad were about the same age then, about 30. But how, Scott? How? I guess the coma, like hibernation. But don't ask me to explain Einstein's theory of time and relativity. I guess your dad's first ion engine was good, too. Colfax must have approached the speed of light to reach this space void. He's coming around. Oh. This must be the place. You're an angel. What happened? You'd never believe it. That's right. Eddie Colfax. Meet Crystal Mace, the professor's daughter. She wasn't around when you made your flight. Well, what do you mean? Crystal will have plenty of time to fill you in on the way home. Let's get this baby turned around, Taurus. Professor, we've got them. They're coming back. 
Thank heavens they're safe. Let's get down to the tube and meet them. I hope they're all right. Scott, Chris, bless you. The engine worked. Both of them worked, Professor. Ours and Eddie's. Hi, Bill. Eddie. Eddie Colfax. I, I can't believe it. Takes a bit of getting used to. This test has proved more than the capability of your ion engine, Professor. Eddie's 25 years in space will prove a lot of theories on time and relativity. Well, come on, everybody. We've got some celebrating to do. Don't miss the next exciting adventure with Taurus, Crystal, and Scott McCloud. Space Angels.